An iPhone is about to try and survive the extreme cold, deadly radiation and thin atmosphere of Mars inside this Mars simulator. This button turns on Mars atmosphere. It's still working, you can see the camera moving. So this iPhone has waterproof seals, and at this point, they would have completely burst. And now for the messed up part. We're gonna get this phone down to negative 200 degrees. Oh, that's cold. We're just reaching freezing temperatures right now, where most humans would be a bit uncomfortable, but we want more. We are now at negative 70 degrees. Somehow, the screen has been activated. Negative 152. Colder than the coldest place on Earth. FaceTime is still working. I don't know how. Just kidding. FaceTime has disconnected, and the iPhone is restarting. But only part of the iPhone. These pixels seem frozen in time. We're just creeping up on negative 200, and the iPhone is dead. iPhone's coming out. That's super cold. The buttons still work because it's not like wet kind of frozen. It's like dry frozen, if that makes sense. It's a dead iPhone. I didn't even get to test it with my other secret weapon, but it didn't make it that far. So we'll have to test it with that later, after we build an iPhone that could survive on Mars. But first, we have to test each part to find which ones need to be reinforced. Starting with the battery, which should be pretty interesting because this is what happens when you stab it. This thing's fully charged, by the way. All right, maybe we should leave the area. The next iPhone battery is going into the Mars simulator. I've got a little voltage meter so we can see it die. Turning on the Mars atmosphere. Okay, it needs to be plugged in. Nothing's happening so far. Time to make it really cold. Temp's dropping. I'm hoping we get something like this. The voltage is starting to drop. We are now at negative 200 degrees. At this point, it looks like the battery is slowly losing its charge and dying. We're down to the lowest voltage that this battery is supposed to be at. I could just let it die, but what happens if we charge it? All right, I'm plugging in the frozen battery. Nope, the battery has like an internal cutoff that stops it from charging. Fine, do it myself. Nothing's happening. I think it's too frozen. When this thaws out, it's just gonna catch on fire whenever it wants. It's fully thawed out. Well, I don't know where all the power went, but we're gonna have to find a way to keep it warm. That's what we were looking for. Maybe it just needed to warm up. But that's not even the most important part of this iPhone. It's the CPU. If the iPhone CPU doesn't survive Mars, then this video is Kind of pointless. Is an iPhone in Mars kind of pointless? Shut up. So to test this, I'm going to take the CPU out of this perfectly good computer. Because the iPhone CPU is way too small for this test. And just to prove that it works. See? It works. I'm just going to attach some tiny little wires to it. That way we can see the voltage when it goes inside the Mars simulator. Let's put it under Mars atmosphere and see what happens. It looks like the CPU doesn't care. So that means it's time to get real cold. That CPU is now at negative 204 degrees and it is still working. But let's take it out. I can feel it burning my hands. Look how cold that is. Take the wires off. Now we just have to warm it up. In football, they warm up their hands by sticking them down their pants. No, no. It's not as cold as I thought it was gonna be. You know what happens when you lick a pole and your tongue sticks? Something like that's going on. Moment of truth. Hey! All my games are safe. But what if I have important data and it's on Mars? Will I be able to get it if it's this cold? And we're gonna find out if it works. I'm gonna plug it into the working computer, which I'm glad it works, otherwise I don't know what I would have done the rest of the video. So here's the drive with all my important data, and I'm gonna copy everything to the desktop. The data is transferring off the SSD, but it's only at negative 120. Let's get it down to negative 200. We are now at negative 217. The data has slowed down to half of what its speed was. Negative 224. And we are down to floppy drive speed. It'll take more than a day to transfer, but that also might be because I messed up the CPU. <laughs> Let's see if I take it out and warm it up. It moves faster. It's actually speeding up. I think we have all the information we need. The first problem this iPhone would have on Mars is actually pretty easy to fix. All we have to do is 
pop this thing open and replace the waterproof seals. But just as we're closing this thing up, we're gonna leave it slightly open and put it inside of here. All this box really does is make it to where we can seal the phone at something closer to what Mars atmosphere is like. Otherwise, it might pop open like this. The only problem now is it might implode. Well, I don't hear any weird hissing noises, so I guess we'll find out later. But this was the easiest problem to solve. Now, we have to keep it warm. So because this iPhone screen freezes, we'll be making a heated screen out of epoxy and the same type of wire that's in your hair dryer. And it doesn't work. The problem with this one is, is the epoxy is too thick and the wires are also too thick. So that means whatever we use has to be even thinner. So this time, after pouring the epoxy, I heated it up and placed a wire that is as thin as a human hair. Now to put it on our phone here. I'm gonna open up my wallet. Yep, still empty. Hey, Time to move on to the big boy version. The heater for the screen consists of five very thin and precisely cut wires, more or less. Now I have to attach these each one by one to the screen with epoxy a hundred more times. Except it's not the placement of the wires that matters. It's the thickness of the epoxy that's the problem. So after applying the epoxy, I tried heating it up to make it thinner, trying not to spill it off the edge. I messed up. It's a good thing this is super easy to clean. Oh, it's in the ports. So what I'm going to do instead is fill this entire case here with silicone rubber so it doesn't spill off the edges. Anybody who works at Apple is gonna be so upset. Now all we have to do is add some heat, cure it with UV light, and hope the touchscreen still works. All right, let's see if we can get it out. <laughs> and the iPhone should just slide out of the silicone. She's out. I feel really bad for this phone. Not really. Just a little bit of trimming. This thing's getting kind of crusty looking, but still works. Except that was the easy part, because this heater needs power. So I bought this iPhone battery case, hoping it would give us some extra power. But this battery's just a little guy. Barely did anything. That's why I'm not using it. This battery has enough power to power all of the lights in this room. The only problem with using a case like this iPhone case, if we put the bigger battery inside and the phone, it doesn't fit. So to fix that, we're gonna have to trim a big hole in the back of it so we can fit everything inside. There we go. We put our giant battery inside. Wow, this might actually work. It's a thick boy though. And now for the risky part. Let's see if it charges the phone. All good. So that means we can now install another heater and a temperature sensor that this computer uses to keep the iPhone warm. And now for the real problem, fitting all of that into that tiny little square. Except it doesn't all fit into this tiny little square. But with a little bit of duct tape and a sad attempt at some decent cable management, it kind of fits. Oh no, this thing's starting to look like a bomb. That is a thick Boy. Now this monstrosity of an iPhone might be able to survive the low pressure and cold of Mars, but it has nothing to protect it from the Mars radiation. So we're going to have to use something toxic. But we'll start with a base layer of normal epoxy so we can see the computer's lights. But since epoxy does nothing to protect the radiation, the next layer will be a massive layer of lead oxide impregnated epoxy that I am now giving birth to. This is like the forbidden bar of soap. We can now put this inside of the Mars simulator and see if it survives. But before that, I'm going to be giving this away to one of you guys. All you have to do is comment something down below. A joke, you could roast me, I don't care. Whatever comment has the most likes, I will send this to your house. But you will have to sign a waiver because it's toxic. It's going inside. Last time the iPhone lasted less than 10 minutes. Let's see if we can make it last longer. We are now past the point where the previous iPhone failed. And we're even at a colder temperature than we've had before. This iPhone has now survived twice as long as the original iPhone. The radioactive material is right underneath the phone and I'm not getting any reading on this thing. So the iPhone must be blocking a good amount of that radiation, which is good because I don't want it. For reference, this is what happens when you're right on top of it. This iPhone just doesn't care. Creeping up on 25 minutes at negative 260. At this point, the heaters should have already turned on and that's what's keeping this iPhone warm. We are now at 45 minutes that this iPhone has been surviving the Mars simulator. And I think I'm gonna take it out because I don't know how long the battery for the heater is gonna last. Look at it. It's cold, button still works. We're at 50% battery. Looks like a working iPhone to me. I have to go wash my hands now because this is toxic. <laughs> okay, bye.